Hi there. This video shows how to restyle a WordPress site using Microthemer and also serves as a quick start tutorial. Once Microthemer has been installed and activated, we can access the interface via the Microthemer link. This will bring up Microthemer's visual interface that sits above our website. We have this WordPress theme that is a bit dark and moody. With some design tweaks, we can make it look fresh and modern, like this. Let's start by restyling the links in the main menu. We begin by double-clicking any menu link. The menu link is covered by a semi-transparent blue overlay. The overlay gives us visual feedback on which element or set of elements we are targeting. We can broaden the default single targeting by hovering our mouse over the options in the targeting tab. The highlighting changes to show us that all menu links are now being targeted. Let's give our selector a memorable name, such as Menu Links, and place it in the main menu folder. Finally, we click the Create Selector button to start applying styles. Notice that our new selector has now appeared in the main menu folder. So let's make a simple color change so that the links match the dark color of the logo. We'll also make the font bolder and change the case to small caps using the font variant option. Now let's style the search box. As always, we start by double clicking the search box. Give it a descriptive name such as search box and save it in the header folder this time. If we want to give the search box rounded corners, we can go to the border styling group. By the way, hovering over any icon will clarify what the icon represents. And if we click the icon, we can read an explanation of what the style property does. Okay, we'll try setting the border radius to 20 pixels. Another useful tip is that if we double click the one border radius field, Microthemer will automatically apply the same value to all four border radius fields. We can also add a very subtle gradient. To do this, we move onto the gradient styling group and set color A to white and then color C to a very light gray. We only want a two-tone gradient, so we'll leave the middle color B blank. If we want our gradient styles to work in old versions of Internet Explorer, we can enable CSS3 Pi for this selector here. Now we can move on to change the styling of the rest of the site. Let's start by double-clicking on the big page heading. We want to target all page headings across the whole site, so we will choose the broadest possible option at the very bottom of the targeting options, H1. We'll give it a name, Heading 1, and create a new custom folder, this time called Titles. It's nice to style headings differently from the body text. We can easily apply a Google font by selecting Google Fonts from the Font Family menu. Once the page is loaded, we can visually browse the entire Google Fonts library and sort them by popularity or alphabetically. We're going to use the bold variation of Bitter. And then simply click the Use This Font to apply it. To give our theme a lighter feel, we're going to switch to dark text on a white background. We double click the main page area and go through the usual process of creating a selector. We can change the background color to white via the background options. And to make the text readable, we will set the font color to dark gray. Our subheadings don't stand out much, so let's make some adjustments. We can target both headings by double-clicking one and then broadening the targeting to all subheadings. We'll name this selector Heading 2 and save it to the Titles folder. We'll increase the font size to 24 pixels and set the text to uppercase via the text options. We can also give our subheadings a meaningful icon. We just browse for a background image via the background options and then click the Insert into Post button. We want our icon to appear only once, 
so we set the image repeat property to no repeat. And because we also don't want the icon overlapping with the text, we add left padding to the heading. Finally, as we don't want to use the same icon for the method heading, we can create a separate selector just for that. We will call this heading Method Heading 2 and save it in the Titles folder. Now we just need to set a different background image. We've covered the basics of applying styles, but there's more to MicroThemer, so let's have a look at some other features. Most modern WordPress themes have some responsiveness. MicroThemer is very useful for making a completely non-responsive site adjust to different screen widths. Adjusting the screen width of this example theme reveals that it looks okay at smaller screen sizes, but there is certainly some room for improvement. The search box, for example, could do with some work. So let's relocate the search box selector. By the way, we can temporarily turn highlighting on to remind ourselves exactly what a selector targets. Responsive web design is achieved by applying media queries. A media query places a condition on whether the styles we define have an effect or not. The condition often relates to a minimum or maximum screen width. If we hover over the phone tab, we can see that it specifies a max width condition of 480 pixels, which is wide enough to cater for most phones. The screen width slider minimum or maximum values also change to reflect the condition. This tells us that the styles we enter under the Phone tab will only have an effect if the user's screen is anything up to, but no more than, 480 pixels wide. To illustrate this, let's increase the width of the search box to 100%. Now let's switch back to full screen view. Keep an eye on the width of the search box as we gradually reduce the screen width. It's only when we reach the critical screen width of 480 pixels and below that our 100% width style takes effect. Now let's apply this to something else. At the bottom of the page, we have some additional recipes presented in two columns. This looks fine at large screen widths, but if we go back to the phone tab, they start to look a bit squashed. We can target the columns by double-clicking an image and then using the HTML navigator to move up to the parent column. As usual, we give our selector a name and save it to a folder. And then we simply go to the Phone tab and set the width of the columns to 100%. This allows the images and text to fill the full width of the screen. MicroThemer suggests some default media queries, such as the Phone media query, when we first install it. But they are completely editable. We can change the labels, min and max width code values, or create our own custom media queries. We can also choose between different sets of media queries. For instance, if we're using the mobile-first approach to responsive design, we might try the mobile-first semantic media queries and set the default preview screen to 480 pixels. Designing for multiple devices adds a bit of complexity, but it's worth the effort because Google has recently started ranking mobile-optimized sites higher for mobile users, which makes sense when you think about it. MicroThemer is not just a tool for non-coders. It comes pre-integrated with the ACE Code Editor, which has syntax highlighting. We access this by clicking the Code Editor icon at the top right of our screen. The big advantage of using MicroThemer's Code Editor instead of a desktop code editor is that we can see the effect of our style rules almost immediately. We don't have to constantly switch between applications and refresh our browser. We just write some code, hit the Control and S keyboard shortcut, and watch the changes appear on screen. The code editor also provides a quick way of applying styles to specific versions of Internet Explorer so that we can easily fix common layout problems with old versions of IE. To return to the normal editing options, we simply click the Code Editor icon again. We've only touched on a handful of the features MicroThemer has to offer. Please read the docs for learning about undo, importing, and exporting design settings, and previewing the CSS code MicroThemer generates. The full documentation can be accessed from the Help icon. You can quickly access the forum from here. 
Many thanks for watching. If you have any questions, our friendly support team is on hand to help.